Hey, welcome to No Thumb and Zoo on YouTube. My name is Maxine and I work here. Now, on today's video, we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. Recently, we became partners with a organization called Nature Safe. And uh, last week, I actually went down to kind of have a little tour of their facility. And uh, Nature Safe is a relatively new organization that specializes in cryopreservation. Uh, it's a little bit of a complicated, tricky kind of subject to explain, but I'm going to do my best. So while I was down at Chester, uh, we got to go down to the actual kind of headquarters of Nature Safe, uh, which is located about 45 minutes south of Chester, and they actually gave us a tour of their facility. It was an interesting tour. They gave us a really cool presentation on why cryopreservation is really important. Their aim is to try and create a living biobank of all different types of species, not just mammals. So they wanted to create a living biobank. Now, how is a living biobank different to a normal biobank? Well, it's to do with the cryopreservation. So if you've ever seen Austin Powers, they froze him for years and years and they managed to bring him back to life. Uh, it's a little bit tenuous link, but it kind of helps explain the concept. Traditional biobanking is actually done with freezers, which is between like minus 20 and minus 80 degrees. And when you freeze, tissue cells, so that's blood or uh, reproductive cells, skin cells, at those temperatures, it actually explodes the cells. So all they're left with that's usable is the actual DNA. Now with cryopreservation, it's actually very different. It's actually storing the cells in liquid nitrogen. And at minus 196, believe it or not, in liquid nitrogen, it completely keeps the cells intact, which means that you can take these cells out of the freezer and actually culture them because they're still alive, um, which is really, really cool. So it means that you can have a lot more kind of genetic info that's been stored in that entire cell and it's not just the DNA that you're relying on. So what Nature Safe are trying to do is they're trying to build up this biobank. Currently they have just under 300 species represented in their actual little biobank storage. We went in and we had a look at the vats where they've got them stored, which are pretty impressive. What I found really interesting was that it didn't rely on electricity at all, because that's the first kind of thing that came into my head, being so paranoid about power, like we are here at the zoo. So these big vats, all they have is they just have to contain liquid nitrogen. So just naturally, liquid nitrogen just stays at like minus 196. The only thing that required power was these little thermometer things that kind of reached into the big vats, which are linked to external alarms. So if the level of liquid nitrogen drops, and the temperature just fluctuates slightly, then they get like little alarms on their phones. So power outages, anything like that, they don't need to worry about it. The living biobank is safe. Just in one of these tubs was all of the samples from UK zoos. <laughs> They've got over 800 samples stored from various different zoos in the UK who have actually signed up to them. And what our kind of agreement is, is that if we get any kind of deceased animals on site, then they kind of almost go into this process. So. For example, we're obviously standing here in our Livingston fruit bat house. Uh, these guys are critically endangered. So in the wild, there's less than 1,300 of them left. And in captivity, there's only just over 100. And we have 24 of those. So there's only three zoos in the world that actually hold the species. So if, for whatever reason, touch wood, not for quite a while, any of our bats actually kind of either become deceased or we have to euthanize them, we'll actually be taking samples from the animal and submitting it to the Nature Safe kind of biobank. So this is one of the Nature Safe sample packs that you get. And what's really cool about obviously being one of their conservation partners is that they send you out like half a dozen of these ready to go. And it's already like pre-addressed. We just have to pay for postage, which is fine. Um, they've got they're very specifically designed. So the sample packs in the middle there and then there's space here on either side for the frozen ice packs because the frozen ice packs doesn't want to come into contact with the actual samples because uh, freezer damage can actually totally damage the sample. So there's loads of packs in there to uh, put the samples in. And then for everything that we submit, um, we have to fill out a sample submission form, which basically gives as much of the historical data about the animal involved, um, and obviously the tissue collection information, when it was collected, etc. Uh, it gives us very, very specific instructions on sample preparation and packaging, because it's so important that the sample arrives to them in really good condition. And the number one thing, because this is a living biobank, 
we do not freeze any of these samples because when you freeze the cells, they actually break and explode. So this is all very specific instructions, mainly for the vets uh, to look at so that they can make sure the sample is nice and sterile before it goes in the pack. And what's really interesting uh, is about the different sample types and submission kind of timeframes. So if it's like a skin or muscle, ears, ears are a really good one, you've got three to four days from death or biopsy. But if it's anything like uh, gametes, so like ovaries and testes, uh, sperm samples, it has to be within 24 hours uh, of death or either neutering. So we've got a very, very tight time window on kind of sending this stuff down there so that it stays alive. But even if Nature Safe already have the species in their database, they're happy to receive multiple samples from various different animals because obviously in the future, when they want to actually use these samples and recreate these species if they've been lost, the more samples and the more examples of these different animals that they've got in their kind of stocks, the better we can produce a genetically viable population. One of the things that they can use, especially with mammals, is like ear tissue. So it's like a two centimeter square chunk of ear tissue. Mm, these bats have pretty big ears, but I don't know if there's enough there, maybe two ears. And then they take those cells, the, the skin cells, and they actually then can store that in the liquid nitrogen. And in the future, using stem cell technology, which is just mind blowing, you can actually reprogram skin cells to become like egg or sperm cells. It's mind blowing. Or if it's a male or a female, the males, they can actually take the testes and store them and try and extract sperm out of the sperm duct. Or if it's a female, they can take kind of like slithers, slices of the ovaries. So Nature's Safe are obviously kind of preempting that technology is going to advance, which it definitely is. And hopefully in the future, scientists will be able to access this, this living biobank and be able to kind of create endangered species that might be lost by then. We're currently in the middle of a mass extinction event with IUCN actually reporting that 42,100 species are threatened with extinction. And this is only going to get worse. Nature's Safe are obviously trying to create more partners around the world so that there can be more kind of living biobanks based in any country. Because the one thing about taking samples and giving them to Nature's Safe is that you've got a very, very short window of time. If it's like a sperm cell or kind of like ovary tissue, it has to be with them within 24 hours. Um, if it's skin cells, you've got three to four days to play with. So that basically means, I mean, Nature's Safe is based about four hours down the road from us. So we'll have to rely on super fast shipping. But that's one of the reasons why it's kind of limited to the UK only. So they're currently trying to expand and get more kind of zoo partners on board around the world. And then they showed us all the technology that they've got in their labs where they can actually test sperm samples and see how good they are because um, they use that for AI technology. And that's kind of the stuff that they can do for zoos as well. Because sometimes when you've got big exotic animals that are under us an aesthetic, it's a really cool tool to be able to go in and do a, like an electro ejaculation procedure where you can extract semen from these animals that normally you wouldn't have access to. And then they can actually go into the biobank too. That's a better way of getting stuff rather than waiting for them to be dead. So that's kind of like the only other option. Nature Safe aren't just after the super rare species, they're also after just any species. Because if you look forward into the future, 100 years from now, I mean, imagine where the planet's going to be. I mean, with everything that's going on right now, it's, it's really, really worrying. So Nature Safe are after any type of species because every single species plays an important role in the environment and in biodiversity. And without just one animal, makes a big difference because every single animal either has a predator or has a prey. It plays an important part in a story of the environment. So with our agreement, we're obviously, every time we get the opportunity to, we will extract any samples and submit them to this living biobank. Anyways, it was super awesome to get to see behind the scenes at Nature Safe and a huge thank you to the team. Uh, as a charity, you guys are doing amazing things. So thanks so much for letting us in. And also thank you very much for these super cool glow in the dark color changing sperm key rings. They are different, really appreciate that. Uh, if you guys wanna learn any more about Nature Safe and what they're doing, I've put the link in the description there. Um, and obviously, if you've got any questions, then just drop them in the comments below. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't done already, please do remember to like this video 
and subscribe to the Northumberland Zoo YouTube channel, and we shall see you next time.